uh, Dr. N. Uday Kumar, who would speak on parent-based early intervention program in autism spectrum disorder, which is a very, very important topic. And uh, a little introduction about Dr. Uday Kumar. He's an associate professor um, and is the head, uh, head of the Karthikeyan Child Development Unit at Department of Pe Pediatric Medicine at uh, SRMC. Uh, he has finished his uh, MBBS from MMC in 1990 and then completed his DCH at Mysore for, in 1994. Went on to do MD in pediatrics from MMC in nine, and completed in 1998. He has also completed his DNB in pediatrics in 1998 and had uh, postgraduate development uh, training DDN from CDC Trivandrum in University of Kerala, which is in, about child development. He's had some uh, research and training experience as well. He's been a, he's guided PhD scholars for their dissertation and he's been involved in teaching um, in UG and PG students as well. Uh, he's been involved in child development care and writing proposals for clinical trials in ASD, ADHD, LD, and executing the study and disseminating the results and having publications in the same topic as well. Over to you, sir. Yeah, good evening, uh, everyone. Am I audible? Yes, sir, you're audible, sir. Yeah. I thank uh, IMA Kolumbakam branch and uh, particularly Dr. Shanti, madam, and uh, Dr. Venkat Sai, sir, for uh, giving me an opportunity to talk uh, before this elite uh, group of doctors and uh, many of whom are my teachers, like uh, to name uh, Professor N. Daivanagam, sir, he was our uh, Professor of Pediatrics when I was doing my house surgency at uh, Madras Medical College. Uh, thank you for the opportunity and start uh, sharing my screen. <clears throat> uh, is my screen visible? Yes, sir. Your screen is visible, sir, but if you can just uh, make it into slide share, it might be yeah. better. Yes, sir. Your we can see it, sir. Uh, actually, uh, these are some of, uh, I think we need to know like what is common in all of them. Like uh, this is Isaac New uh, Einstein, and this is Michael Anglo. This is Alice in Wonderland, Arthur Lewis Carroll. And this is Charles Darwin, and this is Newton. And uh, this is Temple Grandin. I'll talk about that later. And this is Bill Gates, and all of whom has one thing in common. All of them have autism spectrum disorder. Bill Gates, of course, he has some artistic traits, but not much confirmed. But all others have been proved to have uh, autism spectrum disorder, which meant I think these individuals can still lead a productive life and contribute to uh, society. And I'll be talking about parent-based intervention programs in autism spectrum uh, disorder. And I am heading the Kathigain Child Development Unit at uh, Ramchandra. <coughs> and, uh, and my topic will be going on these lines. I'll be giving you a brief overview of uh, autism spectrum disorder. And I'll be giving you some of the signs behind the problems. Because many of the times, I think we don't know what is uh, going on in these children. And I'll be talking about some of the proven interventions. And I'll be talking about the Indian version of parent-based uh, intervention program. And what is autism spectrum disorder? It is a continuum of neurodevelopmental disorders with Broad, uh, two broad areas of uh, problematic uh, areas. Like one is deficits in social communication interaction. The other is restricted uh, repetitive patterns of behaviors, interests, and activities. It typically starts before 36 months of uh, age, but I think adults will also some, uh, have some amount of symptoms of autism spectrum disorder. Like this child is interested in spinning the objects, and this will come under what is called as a repetitive patterns of behavior. And as clinicians, I think we need to identify these children earlier and provide the referral for uh, proper evidence-based uh, treatment. So previously, if you can see the diagnosis, it has a spectrum of uh, five conditions. What has uh, DSM-5 done is, uh, it has modified them into a single umbrella diagnosis. Uh, like <clears throat> you have only autism spectrum disorder as a diagnosis, and there is provisions for severity in both uh, social uh, interaction and uh, social communication deficits as well as in uh, restricted interest. There is severity provision is there and it also allows comorbidities like say intellectual disability, ADHD and genetic disorders to be included into the diagnosis. And uh, we have two broad categories of symptoms. One is impairment in social communication interaction. A2 is restricted repetitive patterns of behavior. 
I'll make it easy with some uh, clinical uh, examples in the coming slide. And uh, one is one is deficit in social emotional reciprocity. How they uh, respond to the other uh, individual, whether they are able to share interest, all those things will come. And deficits in non-verbal communication and deficits in developing and maintaining relationships. And then we have this A2, where you have four categories of uh, conditions. Like say, this will include spinning uh, on themselves are looking at spinning fans, tiptoe walking, hand flapping, and uh, sometimes they repeat whatever we talk. What is your name? They'll also be telling what is your name. And insistence on routine, like uh, they want for fixed uh, routines to be there. And highly fixated or restricted interests, like say rotating wheels of car, and the sensory symptoms like uh, uh, touching and uh, smelling, uh, sensitive to sounds like this ball, uh, it will all be happening in autism. But only two out of four needs to be present. I'll give you a case scenario which will make uh, things very easier. Uh, this is a two year, uh, six month old girl child brought with concerns of speech delay. And she doesn't speak, that is a common uh, thing. She only babbles, not obeying commands. But the response to name call is there when a toy or something interesting is offered, but she doesn't share interest. So this comes under 1A. And she pointing for needs, waves, bye-bye, but not sharing interest. So this will come under 1A complaint. That is social emotion. Reciprocity is uh, defi deficient. And second thing is nonverbal communication. That is eye contact and relating to others' emotions. And uh, this child maintains eye contact only transiently. And it understands emotion, but doesn't uh, reciprocate. A child of two and a half years will be able to know the mother is sad and will also be feeling sad for the mother. And sometimes they may be going and wiping the tears also. And this is not happening, but this child gets happy when something interesting is given to her, likes to be hugged. And uh, one C is relationships, that is interacting with children. This child excited on seeing other children, likes to interact with them, but not having associated play with them. Not able to play uh, very well with other children. So it's more of a qualitative uh, deficit. So to qualify for 1A, all these three conditions, at least one problem should be there. And the second thing is restricted repetitive interest. This child doesn't play purposefully with drugs. No. No pretend play, but spin subjects and hand freeze, no sensory concerns or uh, rigid routines. I think my internet is a bit unstable. Uh, okay. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Now you are audible, sir. Yeah, fine. Uh, so next, I think uh, I think all of us, uh, Dr. Priya Kannan would have told that this is a very important topic because the numbers keep increasing. Like say, what was, like say, 1 in 165 in 2004 has now become 1 in 68 and keeps increasing. Recent uh, CDC data says somewhere around 1 in 48. So that is alarming. That is CDC data, like 2014 is one in 68. And England data is based on uh, uh, Indian research study, multicentric, uh, that quotes about 1.12%. That is one in 100 or one in 90 roughly, and 4.5 times more common in boys. That's why in the picture I have shown you more males than uh, females. And why is this uh, increase in the incidence in autism? One is change in the criteria for diagnosis. Previously, they'll be diagnosing as PDD, NMOS, Asperger's, now they come under what is called as an autism spectrum disorder. The other is uh, increased awareness. More and more people are now Googling and trying to find out what is why my child is not looking at me. And uh, they are coming for uh, medical attention. And a lot of uh, increased screening rates are there. And uh, previously, these children are misdiagnosed as, say, intellectual uh, disability. And uh, now there we have provisioning of services available for these children. So obviously, they are getting uh, diagnosed earlier. And also now the age at which the parent consumes, it's also increasing in the upper side. Like say increased maternal, paternal age and some of the perinatal factors, they play a big role in causing uh, autism spectrum uh, disorders to increase. The other thing is, uh, most of the parents will have this query like, why is my child having this condition? Actually, the uh, science says, like say, it's a combination of genetics and environment. What is also more important is the epigenetics. What is epigenetics is here the gene structure as such is normal and because of the influence of the environment on the genes, the genes that have to be suppressed gets expressed and that has to be expressed gets suppressed. But what is more important and alarming is a recent finding which says that these uh, epigenetic changes not only affect the individual but is also heritable and transmissible to future uh, generations. 
which meant the gene may be intact, but the grandfather if is affected, may be transmitting the condition to the grandchild. So that I think we need to be very careful and try to provide a very good environment for the mother during a uh, period of pregnancy. And uh, the other thing is we want to talk about genetics. Uh, the recurrence risk is about 10 to 20 percent. And as we can see, like monozygotic twins are more severely affected than uh, dizygotic twins. And full siblings have about 7 to 10 times more increased uh, incidence of ASD. And the heritability is also quite high. And as we have discussed, males are more affected. And if the proband is a female, the risk for the subsequent child is going to be more. And as I told you, the paternal age, when it has increased, autism risk goes high. And birth order, they say it has decreased in later siblings. And uh, this could be like uh, there is a bias like reproductive uh, curtailment or stoppage. That is when the parents have a child with autism spectrum disorder, they may not be going in for a second child. So as such, we cannot have much of idea about the birth order and uh, the degree of uh, risk for autism in the subsequent siblings. What is also more important is the older age, uh, mother and father, then uh, obesity, some of the infections, vitamin D deficiencies, all those factors also play a role in terms of, say, uh, increasing the risk of autism spectrum disorder. Then we'll come into, like, say, a bit of social uh, brain, because many of you are thinking, like, why these children, they look at objects more rather than the people. That is because the superior temporal sulcus is the one which is involved in biological motion. That is, biological motion is our ability to focus on animate objects rather than uh, inanimate uh, objects. I think for that, superior temporal sulcus is very important. And I guess looking at other people, I think that plays a big role. And as it can, I'll turn to you in the next uh, few minutes, there are a lot of things going on, not only anatomically, but in terms of, say, functional uh, connectivity. And there are some regions of the brain which are concerned with uh, social, emotional relate, and then uh, face perception. So what is really happening in these areas of social brain circuitry? There is altered neuronal uh, connectivity and synaptopathies. Uh, neuron migration defects can occur. The neurotransmitter imbalance can occur and altered dendritic morphology. And uh, now people are talking about what is called uh, neuroinflammation. Recently, I've uh, read in one of the articles where they talk about maternal autoantibodies auto being uh, detected in the mother. That can give you an uh, idea about the increased risk of autism in the child. That is about uh, two proteins, like so one is uh, crimp. Uh, those sort of things are now coming up, which means there is some amount of inflammation that is happening to a uh, developing fetal brain. The other thing is mirror neuron hypothesis, where children with autism are said to have deficits in uh, mirror neuron. What exactly is mirror neuron? That is, uh, that could be the reason why the child is not uh, looking at the parents or others. Like mirror neuron is, uh, it is unique to humans and primates uh, in the sense like monkeys, when we do something, they will be imitating the actions. But in humans, apart from that, they also, this system gets activated uh, not only by imitating, but also observing other children. Like this mother carrying the baby and this girl is carrying a doll. And this girl just looks at the mother and then does the same thing. And uh, our mirror neuron system is activated. And this mirror neuron system activation is not happening in children with autism spectrum disorder. But what is more important is this mirror neuron uh, system is extremely important for developing social behavior, motor and uh, language uh, abilities. Now we all know, like from the picture, what am I going to talk about? It is about imitation. Uh, we think that babies imitate slightly later, but it can start even in early infancy. That is, it's a critical tool for learning and uh, social acceptance. Uh, even before speech, uh, it uh, develops and it offers them a platform for engagement with others and a means for learning from uh, others. And it also gives an opportunity to take turns in uh, social interaction and uh, share others' topics. And it also helps to synchronize their experience with others, thereby experiencing another person's state, which in other words means theory of mind. That is, you look into the other person and to see what they are uh, thinking. So this is all happening when the child imitates a uh, thing. All these things are deficit in a child with autism. And unless we understand these things, we may not be able to know what is happening in the uh, intervention part of it. The next uh, slide, what I'm going to talk about is very, very important. And this is joint attention. The child shifts attention back and forth between the parent's space and an object for the purpose of uh, social sh sharing. But this child looks at an orange and points. But this is for needs. It is not for sharing. So this is called as proto-imperative pointing. Whereas this child looks at an aeroplane which is flying up and also sees the mother is uh, seeing the aeroplane. 
and this is proto declarative pointing so this proto declarative pointing and to some extent imperative pointing may be uh, absent in children with autism spectrum disorder so that deficits i think we need to understand and the therapy should be focusing on addressing those deficits because uh, if there is uh, joint attention problems are there then the child will not be able to develop uh, language skills and uh, when a child develops joint attention gestures then they will have better language skill and this will happen both in typical children as well as children with autism spectrum uh, disorder so having known all these concepts i think we need to know like uh, uh, the management part i'll touch upon uh, people generally spend lot of uh, time effort and money on uh, complementary medicines we have done a study in ramchandra where uh, we found out that 50% of children have been using ayurvedic and uh, uh, siddha medications uh, what we need to tell the parents is they should not uh, use medications which are harmful and which may be draining out their financial emotional and uh, time resources that i think we need to be very careful and uh, regarding educational interventions we all know about occupation therapy speech therapy and uh, social skills uh, training but what is more important is aba and the developmental model i think which we need need to uh, focus and uh, also we need not uh, we should not ignore the medical management part of it because that plays a very big role in uh, improving the quality of life for both the child and the parent medical attention will be required, required in terms of say neurological uh, pediatric neurology input uh, for epilepsy and then uh, maybe uh, child will have constipation sleep problems uh, self injurious behavior hyperactivity anxiety depression all of these conditions which when recognized and managed properly will improve the quality of life of both the child and the parent and some of the challenging behaviors like aggression and temper tantrums may be requiring behavioral modification plus or minus uh, medication so there is definitely a role for uh, medical uh, management in autism spectrum disorders and uh, what is also more important i think this should be the take home slide i think because uh, parents identify concerns about the children by 12 to 18 months but what is happening in U uk the average age of diagnosis of autism spectrum disorder is uh, 3.2 years and in india they say it's about 9 to 12 months later so which meant we are identifying these children slightly late and uh, that i think we need to avoid and this slide should be the take home slide like uh, american academy of neurology says like if any one of the features is present the child not making any sounds or babbling by 12 months no pointing this child uh, so nicely points at something with such a uh, keen uh, look this child will be at less risk for autism no pointing or gestures by 16 months no single word by 16 months no two spontaneous uh, words by 24 months and loss of language or social skills at any age i think we need to be uh, suspecting asd and then we have to refer what is more important is one third of children uh, will have regression this is uh, uh, abroad data uh, from our experience i think we don't have this amount of uh, numbers and the regression starts at 18 to 24 months and uh, this is a very good uh, systematic review about autism intervention in uh, india which talks about uh, research is happening rapidly with a lot of a uh, rural urban divide is there and adolescent adult autism studies are la lacking and uniformity and multicentric studies are lacking in practice what is happening is uh, interventions are largely unorganized mainly managed by allied health centers people and I, i won't say like all of them don't have proper assessments many of them may not be having uh, appropriate uh, assessments for both primary as well as uh, comorbid conditions which has to be taken care and uh, this is an excellent article which everyone should read like more so if you are a pediatrician uh naturalistic developmental behavioral interventions uh, empirically validated treatment for asd and each of these people are very well renowned in this uh, field like say sally rogers has uh, the early start denver model kasuri has the uh, jasper model and ingersoll has that impact model they are all pioneers in their own field they have all come together and put a slide in such a way that both developmental and behavioral approaches they converge when you are managing children who are very young and uh, everyone talks about natural setting being the best uh, settings and should involve shared control between the child and the therapist and you should utilize natural contingencies like say you provide more activity time for the child the child does something uh, good uh, the child responds and then interacts well with you try to increase the activity and also use behavioral strategies to treat uh, developmentally appropriate and uh, prerequisite skills what is more important is uh, intensity i think this is what i think we are lacking in our uh, 
day to day practice like 25 hours of therapy is required every week this is technically not possible unless you have them parent based intervention programs and uh, this includes behavioral strategies and uh, developmental strategies and uh, do we have uh, time i think do you have time or uh, can i go for another 10 minutes sir we have already overshot the time by a minute okay 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 then i'll uh, go ahead okay so this is uh, my website which is cdc.com and if you can go into the website and you will have that scope program uh, then once a the parent signs up the, for the program and uh, they will have activities which will promote social play uh, and communication skills what is it uh, doing it's a comprehensive early intervention for infants and toddlers uh, between the ages of 6 and uh, 54 months it's based on that uh, naturalistic developmental uh, model and uh, incorporating uh, behavioral strategies it promotes strong possible positive social relationships and it uh, based on learning principles and it increases the rate of development across all domains a lot of uh, indian studies are coming up on uh, this program and it covers almost all the areas of uh, learning which you, i think we have discussed before and uh, children what we need to understand is children they learn best when they are engaged as active participants like this and the context and the experience should be there then it makes it more meaningful and what is also more important is you should uh, teach them at a level which is slightly beyond their present knowledge this is called a zone of proximal uh, development uh, that is vygotsky theory and that has to be applied and what is more important is uh, the advantage of this program is a home based program parent friendly and easy to understand addresses domain what is more important is lot of uh, computer uh, uh, intelligence are there and there is a role for self monitoring and prognosticated feedback like one year down the program we can know like how far the child has uh, improved in her uh, activities and uh, i think uh, from the picture we'll be able to uh, figure out what i'm talking about is about families uh, because we'll have a lot of time like say meal time play time sensory time where you can uh, engage the child and then help uh, kids connect communicate and uh, learn so why early scope program this is also should be one of the take home slide because what is happening is this is an unstimulated stimulated brain where a lot of uh, nerve connections are there this is an unstimulated brain where less of nerve connections are there and you can find the synapse formation and density increases in the first 3 years of life this says like you not only change the behavior of a child when you start the program earlier but you also do changes in the brain circuitry or neuroplasticity which will have lasting impact for the uh, child and this child maybe we are thinking that this child is uh, looking alone not interacting in the early years a child learns by more of uh, interacting with others and uh, doing uh, activities with them like i have shown lot of slides before and unless you start the scope program earlier you will be losing those opportunities you can start therapy at 3 years but till 3 years a child has not adequate uh, social opportunities i think which we need to look at i think these two slides if you are taking home as take home messages then it is fine and i think uh, we as uh, a pediatricians or doctors should ensure that we are identifying these children earlier and try to bring out that uh, smile and eye contact in them which will uh, provide joy and happiness to the uh, family and this is temple grandin a picture of her i think i put in in the beginning and she is one of the top 10 uh, university professors in us and she is uh, autistic individual what she says is thing about being autistic is that you gradually get uh, less and less art autistic because you keep learning and you keep learning how to behave just like being in a play and i am always in a play and the movie has come out uh, about uh, temple grandin you can also look at it what is more important is even an, as an adult she is learning by play method and the same thing can be applied in a child and the results could be dramatic and we can change the developmental trajectory of the uh, child thank you all uh, for, for your patient hearing thank you sir thank you very much for the lucid talk it was really informative i have a question for you in the chat box um the question is what is the earliest sign single earliest sign to to as they have put it to catch them young but then to say one diagnosis which can help parents take it uh, sir seriously yeah actually if you can if you are going to go by american academy of uh, neurology guidelines i think you have to wait till one year uh, for the babbling to not happen but what is more important is a uh, child at uh, say 6 to 8 months will be enjoying what is called as a peekaboo once you close your face and open the child will be smiling a lot and if these things are not happening and mother sometimes feel 
uh, very doubtful like my child is looking at me and i feel she is also not looking at me so then i think we need to be suspicious what is happening is autism doesn't start at one year or one and a half years it starts right at birth but we fail to recognize them because we don't identify and give importance to those findings but as pediatricians or anyone who is concerned with uh, child care if the child is not smiling at the mother by 2 to 3 months in a more interactive manner and when there is no eye issue or any brain like say occipital cortex issue which will account for not uh, looking at the mother and smiling then i think you have to put them on a intensive protocol of engaging the child in activities so that at one year or so we can do some sort of uh, screening which we can do but i feel the intervention should start very early because these children when they are very young they don't look at the mother but maybe looking at the screen that is going on in the back so those are early cues for us that something is uh, different and deviant that is operating very early in life so take home message the child doesn't have very good interactive uh, uh, social smile by say 2 to 4 months and not enjoying peek a boo by say 6 to 8 months not interactive with the mother and then talking with her in the late infancy better seek a opinion uh, i think we can better slip on the wrong side and then get the opinion rather than keeping quiet till say one and a half two years to get a diagnosis and uh, of course i have had a few uh, interesting scenarios like one child used to come to my clinic at uh, six months eight months or 10 months i used to be very much uh, worried about the child because he was not looking at my face he'll be looking at my pen and other uh, toys in the table and i was asking him whether he is looking at your uh, face and smiling the parents finally got fed up and then uh, they started avoiding coming to my clinic because this doctor keeps uh, telling me but i also gave them the advice to interact with the child but at one and a half years the child was diagnosed to have risk of for autism and at two years the child was uh, diagnosed to have asd but the early interventions that has been done to the child and now the child is going to the school and of course he is a bit shy child but he is able to cope up in a regular school and why i am telling you is uh, it's not very easy to talk about this topic to a parent in your day to day practice because if you broach on the second third time they get irritated with you and they may leave you we should be ready for that thank you sir sir i have a few queries on this yeah so. yeah yeah as a person who is involved in assisted reproductive techniques um when you see children of autism is there any way that uh, is there any differences in the incidence of autism in in uh, children born through natural conceptions as compared to children born through ivf uh, actually there is no direct studies which link both but i think we have to look at uh, things in a holistic manner like when a ch- parent goes for ivf conception usually when they have uh, uh, exhausted all other uh, modalities which meant the age of the parent can be on the higher side like say there i think your advanced paternal and maternal age will come into the picture the other thing is when you are going for ivf conception obviously it will be like uh, multiple pregnancies the chances are more when the multiple uh, pregnancy chances is more obviously the preterm uh, delivery risk is also getting more but studies have clearly proven the child's uh, weight is less than 1.5 kg is the chance for getting autism is slightly more than that for a term baby so with these two uh, reasons i think uh, ivf conception still may carry increased risk but not directly but through prematurity and uh, increased maternal and paternal age that is reassuring sir to know that the technique is not at fault but then uh, yeah. we always like to follow our children for any disorders for until they are they attain certain 16 to 18 years just to know how they are doing so far we are not seen any slight increase but then we are always worried because of the tech invasive technology that we do use on the for the conception part yeah, it's more like people are now talking about single embryo transfer and waiting for yes. the mother to go up to uh, 39 weeks to deliver i think these are some of the strategies which we can use to uh, reduce not only the risk of autism but also other uh, neurodevelopmental uh, conditions that is the norm sir now single embryo transfers and uh, as much as possible term pregnancies i do have certain questions for you in the chat box sir uh, the question one is can autism be completely cured actually that is uh, not possible uh, like say i have told you about bill gates uh, he has autistic traits okay but uh, i think a person who is in the field can pick up uh, subtle signs of autism even as an adult so autism cannot be cured 
but the individuals functioning if it is very high i think they'll be able to function very well in such a way that they are not uh, being recognized as autistic so it is no cure for autism but you can improve the functionality of the individual so that i think you can do with early intervention so the next question is is the incidence of autism more in urban areas actually urban areas uh, there are more opportunities for uh, early identification and uh, i think that could be the reason why it is happening but as i told you the autism intervention study has also talked about uh, big urban rural divide in research so obviously we may not be knowing like uh, whether uh, uh, rural areas are less affected uh, i think uh, it's a good area to study and if it is so like we need to find out whether other things like factors urban factors uh, whether their urbanization factors are playing a role in the increased incidence that's a good point of study for uh, research and as such i don't have answers for that thank you sir are there any more questions to the speaker